Well, in the book, I <clears throat> use a bit of hyperbole and say that Stephen Hawking, the, the famed Cambridge physicist, spoke to me from beyond the grave. What I mean more literally was that his posthumously published book about the big questions was really a, a very poignant read for me because in it, Hawking not only reaffirmed the argument that he'd been making since 1988 in his uh, book, A Brief History of Time, but in some of his m then more recent popular books in which he kind of weighed in with the new atheist to say that there was really no need to invoke the God hypothesis to explain the origin of the universe. And Hawking acknowledged in this very last book, which was published after his death, that he, he had really come to the point where he no longer believed in God at all. He thought that the God hypothesis was an unnecessary hypothesis and that uh, his uh, ideas about quantum gravity could explain the origin of the universe without uh, positing any pre-existing mind or, or creator or designing intelligence of any kind. Um, I show in the book that, that, I, uh, that, that that's not true. I dispute that claim on the basis of the, the physics that Hawking developed, showing that that physics itself has implicitly theistic implications. And in the last chapter of the book, I express uh, a genuine sadness that I have that Hawking, though a, a great and brilliant mind, a, a fantastic physicist, and an inspiring individual, was unable to grasp the implications of his work, his own work, for the origin of the universe and what it had to say about the reality of a pre-existing mind or creator beyond the universe.